Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're doing a deep dive into intuition. Well, actually, some of the more surprising and sometimes odd experiences mm. that people with strong intuition tend to talk about. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. We'll be looking at an excerpt called um, Five Surprising Spiritual Oddities That Affect People with Strong Intuition. Oh, wow. And it's got all these stories that give you such a fascinating glimpse into how some people experience the world, you know, totally differently. Yeah. Have you ever, like, felt this sudden shift in the energy of a place? Right. Or had, you know, one of those dreams that felt more like a premonition? Mm -hmm. That's just a couple of things we're going to unpack today. It's interesting because even though, you know, we talk about intuition a lot, we don't always sort of define it. Right. For this deep dive, let's just say it's a type of knowing that goes beyond, like, our five senses, logical reasoning. Right. It's that gut feeling, that inner voice that sometimes seems to know things before we, you know, consciously do. I like that. A kind of knowing beyond the obvious. Yeah. And the first oddity it kind of speaks directly to that. It's a heightened sensitivity to energy shifts. Mm. It's almost as if intuitive people can sense the emotional residue of a place. Yeah. Or even pick up on, like, the subtle vibes of people around them. The source describes it as feeling energy as, like, a tangible presence, almost like an extra sense. Wow. And they give this compelling example. They talk about this woman, Mia. She was overcome with this sadness when she visited this historic theater. Oh, interesting. And later, she finds out there was this tragic fire that had happened there years ago. Oh, wow. And what's so interesting is that other people at the theater didn't seem to notice anything. Right. But for her, the lingering energy was so palpable. Huh. It raises so many questions. Like, if some people can pick up on these subtle energies, yeah. what does that mean for how they experience history, places of significance, even everyday interactions? Right. Could this sensitivity be a source of insight, like a way of connecting to the unseen layers of our world? It's certainly possible. But it also makes you wonder about, you know, the potential downsides. Right. If you're constantly bombarded with energetic information, how do you differentiate between, like, your own feelings and those you might be picking up from others? Right. Could this sensitivity lead to feeling overwhelmed or overly empathetic, especially in, like, charged environments? It's like having an antenna that's always on, picking up signals you might not even be aware of. Exactly. Which, in a way, brings us to our second oddity unexplainable physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. The source suggests that for some intuitive individuals, physical sensations can be a manifestation of their intuition, okay. a way their body reacts to events or information before their conscious mind catches up. They actually share the story of this guy, Jake. Yeah. And he woke up one morning feeling incredibly anxious and just nauseous. Oh, wow. Couldn't understand why. Until a few hours later when he got a call that a close friend was in crisis. Oh, no. It was as if his body picked up on his friend's distress long before his mind received the news. It's like their intuition is so strong, it bypasses the logical mind and goes straight to the physical. I know we all experience physical symptoms from time to time. Sure. But this makes you think. Have you ever felt, you know, inexplicably unwell and later discovered something had happened that might explain it? Hmm. Could that have been your intuition trying to tell you something? It definitely challenges that traditional view of how we process information and experience the world. Mm -hmm. And it also raises questions about that mind-body connection. Right. You know, if intuition is this form of deep knowing, then maybe it makes sense that it could manifest physically in ways that we don't fully understand. It's a reminder that the body can be a really powerful source of information yeah. if we learn to listen. Right. And speaking of listening, this next oddity highlights a different kind of sensitivity, mm. a deep discomfort with dishonesty. Mm. The source describes intuitives as having this natural aversion to lies and deception, not because they're like good at reading body language, but because they seem to feel dishonesty on an energetic level. Interesting. They describe truth as this like clear frequency, while lies create a palpable disturbance, almost like a dissonance they can sense. It's almost as if dishonesty creates a kind of energetic static for them. Yeah. And they share this story of Sarah, a healer, working with a new client. And Sarah describes feeling this, like, wall of resistance from this client, even though they seemed pleasant on the surface. Ah. Later, it turned out, the client was hiding a pretty significant issue that was blocking their healing progress. Oh, wow. So Sarah's intuition had picked up on that hidden truth even before it was, like, consciously revealed. Wow, that's powerful. It really makes you think about 
the impact of authenticity. You know, if you're constantly surrounded by people who aren't being truthful, whether intentionally or unintentionally, it can create this feeling of unease. Yeah. Especially for someone with heightened intuition. And that raises a big question. Oh, okay. How do highly intuitive people navigate a world where dishonesty, sadly, is quite common? Right. How do they build trust and form genuine connections when they're so attuned to what might be hidden beneath the surface? Mm. That's a fascinating question. And it kind of brings us to this realm where intuition often seems to flourish. The world of dreams. Oh, yeah, dreams. The source suggests that for intuitive individuals, dreams aren't just random firings of the subconscious. Right. They often feel like messages, premonitions, or even like a form of guidance from a higher source. So they're not just dreaming. They're receiving insights and information through their dreams. Yeah, exactly. And these aren't like your typical easily forgotten dreams either. Uh, yeah. The source describes them as vivid, highly symbolic, and uh, so compelling that they're like difficult to ignore. They tell the story of this woman, Clara, who had a dream about this garden. A garden? Filled with these really unusual flowers. And in the dream, there's this woman dressed in white. And she tells her, she says, you must let go to let it grow. Mm. Weeks later, Clara was facing this difficult decision about a relationship. Okay. She was hesitant to end it, but that dream message kept coming back to her. Wow. And eventually she realized that in order for her to grow, she needed to let go of that relationship. Oh, interesting. It's like her subconscious was working through this dilemma. Right. And the dream was a way for that insight to like reach your conscious mind. Uh -huh. It makes you wonder, you know, what messages are hiding in our own dreams? Right. Do we just dismiss them as just random nonsense when they might actually hold these valuable insights. It's certainly worth paying attention to, especially those recurring themes or symbols that, you know, pop up in our dreams, right. even from a like psychological perspective. Yeah. Dreams are often seen as a way for the subconscious to process emotions, work through problems, mm. and even offer creative solutions that we might not be aware of in our waking lives. It's almost as if dreams are this bridge between our conscious and subconscious minds. Yeah. And for intuitive individuals, that bridge seemed to be even stronger. Speaking of bridges, the final oddity we're exploring today deals with the need to create a kind of bridge between the inner and outer worlds. Hmm. The source calls it a compulsion to seek solitude. Oh, interesting. They suggest that intuitive individuals need solitude. Right. Not just to recharge, yeah. but to actually connect with their deeper selves and listen to that inner voice. It's not just about like being introverted or enjoying quiet time. It's this deep seated need to like step away from the noise and stimulation of the external world. Right. To access a deeper level of awareness. They share the story of this guy, Jacob, an artist who finds his greatest inspiration and spiritual connection during solo camping trips. Mm, wow. He describes silence as, like, the space where his best ideas and insights emerge. That makes sense. It's as if, for him, solitude is his conduit to creativity. Yeah. And a deeper understanding of himself and the world around him. You know, I know for many people, the idea of seeking solitude might sound isolating. Sure. But what if it's actually a way to connect more deeply with ourselves? Right. What if it's in those quiet moments, away from all the distractions, that we can truly hear our own inner wisdom? It's an important question, especially in a world that's constantly demanding our attention, you know? Right. Pulling us in a thousand different directions. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could all benefit from creating more space for solitude in our lives. Yeah. Not just as a way to escape, but as a way to, like, reconnect with our inner selves and listen to that quiet voice of intuition that's always there, waiting to be heard. So we've explored five surprising spiritual oddities that people with strong intuition often experience. Mm -hmm. A heightened sensitivity to energy shifts, unexplainable physical symptoms, a deep discomfort with dishonesty, dreams as messages from the divine, and a compulsion to seek solitude. Right. It's been so fascinating to delve into these experiences yeah. and consider what they might tell us about, like the nature of intuition and how it shapes our perception of the world. And even if we don't necessarily identify as, like, highly intuitive, I think there's something valuable for all of us in these stories. Mm -hmm. They remind us to pay attention to those subtle feelings, right. those gut instincts, those moments of knowing that we can't quite explain. Yeah, You know, maybe by tuning into these experiences, we can open ourselves up to like a deeper level of awareness and understanding. Yeah, it really does feel like like a call to pay more attention to those inner nudges, mm -hmm. you know, those moments where we just 
know something, even if we can't logically explain it. And it's important to remember that intuition doesn't always, you know, show up in these big, dramatic ways. Right. It can be really subtle, like mm -hmm. a quiet whisper rather than a shout. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be that feeling you get when you meet someone new. Right. And it tells you to trust them or that nudge that guides you towards a different path, even when it doesn't like logically make sense. It's about learning to trust that inner compass, even when we can't quite see where it's leading. Exactly. But how do we actually do that? Right. Like, how do we strengthen that muscle of intuition mm -hmm. so we can discern between like fear based thoughts? And, you know, those genuine intuitive insights. That's where the real journey begins. Mm. It's a practice, right. a process of paying attention, noticing those subtle cues, yeah. and then having the courage to actually, like, act on them. Mm -hmm. It's also about recognizing that intuition isn't like a one-size-fits-all experience. Right. What works for one person might not work for another. So maybe it's less about trying to, like, force it. Yeah. And more about creating the space for it to emerge. Exactly. Much like Jacob, you know, seeking solitude for inspiration. Right. And this brings to mind something I've always kind of wondered about. If everyone has the capacity for intuition, why does it seem so much stronger in some people? That's a great question. And there isn't really one definitive answer. Some believe it's a matter of genetics, that some people are just like wired for a higher level of sensitivity. Others suggest it's a skill that can be developed through practice, like meditation or mindfulness techniques. Perhaps it's a bit of both, nature and nurture working together. Could be. But regardless of where it comes from, it seems like learning to tap into our intuition can offer like a richer, more meaningful way of experiencing the world. Absolutely. It's about moving beyond a purely logical, rational understanding of life. Yeah and embracing the mystery, the unknown, the possibility that there's more to our existence than like meets the eye. It's like adding a whole new dimension to our perception, right. a way of seeing beyond the surface and connecting to something like deeper, mm. something greater than ourselves. And if this deep dive has sparked your curiosity, even just a little, yeah. I encourage you to, you know, explore further. Mm. Pay attention to your dreams, those gut feelings, those moments of synchronicity that seem to kind of weave their way through your life. Right. Trust that inner compass. And who knows what you might discover. What a fascinating exploration. It seems like we've only just, you know, scratched the surface of this incredible world of intuition. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep listening to that quiet voice within.